my my crazy YouTube friends, it's Dino Pinch. You're in the handyman zone. Today we're gonna turn a couple of pieces of scrap lumber, used recycled lumber, piece of a deck, old fence. We're gonna turn it into a nice decorative wall hanging candle holder. We're gonna be using these LED candles, which are perfectly safe. There's no fire. Some stuff we picked up from the craft store. So check it out. It's not going to take long and it's going to end up being a beautiful craft item. Any one of you can make at home with a little bit of effort, a couple of dollars, and some old lumber that we're going to recycle. Check it out. These uh, little glass, they're kind of, it's like silvery, but it's translucent. So here goes our LED hurricane. Okay, you see it in there? Uh, the, the glass, the little glass was uh, $2.49 each got like a little you know faux diamond trim around it and it's got that mirror let me see if I can show you a little bit it's got that mirror look to it okay see the reflection it's got that mirror look and yet it looks perfectly like a candle is burning inside with that little flicker effect here's a shot of some of our scrap lumber this uh, used to be a 2x12 we're gonna be using this what I like about it is the aged and weathered look of the paint and the wood and we're gonna take total advantage of this you know recycled uh, we're also gonna be using this old piece of fencing here and maybe a couple other pieces of uh, and again the beautiful weathered look of this recycled lumber couple other pieces uh, we may need we'll just grab out of the recycled wood pile one thing you want to make sure when you're working with recycled wood is you got all the nails and screws and whatever out of the wood because if we're cutting this with our nice saw we don't want to hit a nail and ruin our nice expensive saw blade so a couple of minutes spent pulling out nails and uh, whatever out of your wood it's going to just extend the life of your tools what i'm doing at this point is kind of like laying it out i'm thinking of running like either three or five candles maybe like one two three four five um or like one two three because i want to leave a little room we're going to uh We've gotten these wooden uh, letters and we're going to quickly prime them and, and put a little artsy craftsy kind of uh, paint job on them. But I'm going to spell out uh, believe here uh, and leave room for a candle. Again, it's going to be hanging on the wall, so uh, we're going to put that believe in here. So maybe we're going to use three. We're going to do like one, two, three. All right, so we've got that laid out, but maybe I'm going to do it this way, okay? Okay, so uh, what we want to do is uh, we're going to take this piece of scrap fencing that we've, uh, we've got, the aged recycled scrap fencing, and we're going to make little, uh, three little shelves to, uh, to put our hurricane candles on. Our letters, our wooden letters that we got to spell out believe. Uh, the only thing that didn't have an eye, so we got an extra L, and uh, we're going to uh, cut it and uh, make it into our eye. Quick coat of primer on the bare wood, because whenever you have bare wood, you got to prime it. Uh, this is an oil-based primer. It dries really fast, so we're going to do this first, and while the primer's drying, we're going to be working on the shelf. we got about 20-minute dry time on the primer. We're going to be using a cheap uh, disposable brush. One thing I'll mention about the disposable brushes is they're fine, because there's no cleanup. You can just toss the brush uh, on a piece of sheetrock, uh, scrap sheetrock, uh, as our work area. We brushed it off, so we're not going to get any dust in our, uh, or other debris in our uh, primer job. Let's make this L into an I. So we're going to mark our L to make it into an I. I'm going to be using a coping saw, a hand uh, jigsaw, whatever you want to call it. Well, you probably could get away with using anything. There we have it. We've made our L into an I. A nice coat, uh, oil based primer should be dry, totally dry, about 20 minutes for recoating. And uh, you've noticed I put them on a piece of uh, scrap wood because I don't want them to dry flat on uh, the sheetrock or table, whatever you're using, because then they would get stuck to that. So I have them up a little bit so any paint underneath can dry and uh, they won't get stuck to anything. We've cut that piece of fencing, the recycled fencing, to make little shelves for our hurricane candles. We have a beautiful old uh, antique looking end, but where we made our cuts is so mechanical and straight. I've decided to take this rasp and uh, just stuff up these fresh cut edges pretty good. <laughs> We're going to address how this is going to hang on the wall. I've decided to use these picture hanging brackets. I'm going to put two, one on uh, close to each end. We're going to use these little screws. I've decided that I want this as the top edge, so I'm just going to mark it on the back. I'm going to lose my, uh, my spot. We're going to uh, come from the top edge. We're going to measure down, let's say, three inches down. We're going to make a couple of marks along the top edge, three inches down. Five inches on each end. We're going to mark both ends. Horizontal lines, my pencil lines this way, and I made my vertical pencil line the other way, just for reference. Carpenter square, but it could be any straight edge. I'm going to line it up against, remember I made a couple of marks three inches down, so I'm going to line it up with those reference marks and just bring a straight line across. That'll help us get these little brackets on straight. I'm going to take my picture mounting brackets and using that vertical line as the outside screw, I'm going to line it up 
on that line we just made. I'm going to center punch using the bracket as a guide because when you got little screws like this, you always want to uh, you always want to give them a starter hole right on the line because I want these brackets straight too because that's going to help when we hang this up that everything comes straight. Of course, I'm going to repeat the procedure on the other end and taking our little 3 8 inch screws right into that little center punch we just made, which helps get them started. And I'm going to repeat this for the other end. And then when we hang it up, we're just going to put a couple of nails in the wall on a straight edge. We're going to level it and put a couple of uh, nails with heads, little head nails. And, uh, and there's one, and the other one's down the other end there. And that's going to make it easy to hang this up nice and level because our two brackets are nice and level. The important thing is the nail has a head on it, so when we put the nail in the wall, it's going to kind of lock into these, uh, these V-grooves in these uh, picture brackets here. What color are we going to paint our, our letters here? So I'm going to go to the color wheel. Uh, I happen to have a paper color wheel here. Uh, but you can look online, you know, search up color wheel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that blue there, and um, which I would say is in between this blue and the blue-green. So uh, I'm going to take that, and uh, what we're going to do is you can go for a contrasting color, which is directly across the color wheel, which would be like a red or a red-orange, or we can go with a complementary color, which would be like the feet of a triangle, which would be like a violet or a yellow-orange. I think we're going to go um, towards the violet because we, we – and this is like a warm, fuzzy thing. We're writing Believe. It's candles and stuff. It's kind of a warm, fuzzy love kind of feeling. So I'm going to go with a, warm, uh, a warmer color. So I'm going to go in the, uh, the violet to red-violet range as opposed to the orange-yellow or the uh, red-orange, although I may come with those uh, – something like that as a highlight on these after I get my red, red-violet color. So let's go look in our acrylic uh, box. We're just going to use a, a a cheapy old uh, artist brush like this to put it on. Well, here's our uh, artist uh, assortment of paints. It's all like acrylics and stuff like that in here and all different kind of uh, colorful paints. So we're just going to go through these boxes here until we find a nice purple or a, uh, a purple blue that's going to complement that beautiful weathered paint that we have on our recycled wood. <laughs> Say we're gonna space them a little wider, but let's say we need about 14 inches for the believe. What I want to do is find center. This 38 and a half, so that's a uh, uh, 38 is like 19, uh, 19 and a quarter is center. So let's uh, let's put that tape at center, and then I want uh, about seven inches in each direction. I want clear, so we're taking little pieces of tape just to mark it out. So we're gonna come seven inches this side about, and we're gonna come about seven inches this side, and the letters are let's say four inches. There's about four inches, and I'm going to stagger them, uh, like B, E, L, I, E, D. So they're four inches. We're probably going to come down, start at two inches to six. So we're going to, well, let's come down one inch, and then four, five. Okay, so, so that's basically our lettering box. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do at this point is um, I'm going to come from the backside with these uh, two-inch drywall screws. I'm going to come from the backside, and we're going to countersink. So I'm going to get about three-quarters of an inch into the shelf. I'm going to mark it. I'm going to come with the drill. And uh, from the front side, I'm going to drill two pilot holes through to the back. Then I'm going to go to the back uh, with this uh, countersink drill bit. And I'm going to drill through the back and countersink the two-inch drywall screws flush with the back. But they're going to come into the edge of the little candle shelf. And that'll secure our shelves. So let's say and this is in, let's say, about two and a half inches from, from the outer edge. <coughs> and I'm uh, about five and a half inches down. Okay. So I'm going to mark, uh, let's see, what do we got there? We got Okay, so we got six inches down, we got two and a half in, put a little mark, and then six inches down. I'm gonna put two, two at exactly six inches down and two and a half in. So they come nice and straight. Okay. So a little candle shelves are three quarters thick. I want the screw to end up right in the middle. So I've measured in and I've and I've made a nice straight line by measuring it two places up. So I'm gonna take a drill and go all the way through about three-eighths up from the bottom line, which is going to put us right in the middle of our little candle shelf. Okay, now I'm going to switch, take the regular drill out, which was an eighth-inch drill, and I'm going to put our countersink bit in. And I'm going to come from the back. You can see where they came through, one, two. I'm going to countersink. See that? I countersunk it so the heads are going to be nice and recessed from the back. I'm going to repeat that for the other two shelves. 
I've started the two screws from the back. Okay, so that's our two inch drywall screws. And I've started them in just poking through the top. What I'm gonna do now that they're poking through is take the shelf that I wanna put in that particular one because they're, they're not totally uh, even and indexed, but I'm gonna pick uh, the nice worn shelf here and uh, I'm gonna put the, uh, so it's looking like that. So like the worn edges at the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line it up on a pencil mark. So it's nice and straight and even. What I've done is I put two little holes here. Now I can take the drill and just start the screws a little bit. Just a little bit. Come back, put them back in position. And I'm holding a little candle shelf there and I'm just gonna cinch them up tight. You can see I got a nice tight joint there. And then we have a nice floating candle shelf there. Be using a glue uh, like this, it's just basically a, a clear, a clear contact adhesive, and just a couple of dabs on the back of each letter in strategic points. Not too much, not too little, and press it to place. I want to give a little pop to these letters. So watch this little trick. This is a black paint marker. I'm just popping them with the black. If you get loaded up, take the extra paint off. And then I was thinking, make them pop a little bit more. I got a red paint marker. Let's just get a little red there. But I could just kind of use a dry brush and uh, just kind of do the edge. Oh, that looks much better anyway. Okay. Let's try catching that a little bit. Just kind of darken it up. Oh, perfect. Perfect. My friends, my crazy YouTube friends, to finish this up, uh, optional, you could take that same glue we used on the letters uh, and uh, dab on the bottom of the candle and uh, put it on if you're worried about that candle glass falling off or whatever. If in the future you wanted to change uh, uh, hurricane cups or something, you could just pry it up with a putty knife or something like that. And then because this is a reclaimed, a recycled wood product, the paint is chipping and flaking off and it will continue to do so in the future. So if we want to stop that at this point, I'm going to go with either a seal coat type product, which is uh, shellac based, dries very fast and it will effectively seal in the, uh, the flaking paint and give a little luster to the finish. Or we could use a polyurethane, either an oil base or a water base, which dries a lot faster and there's less odors. Uh, and drying faster means there's less chance for dust to settle in it and stuff. So I tend to like the water-based products, but this is an oil-based polyurethane. 
uh, clear, satin, gloss, whatever. We're gonna, uh, you could put a coat uh, or two of polyurethane, coat of two of seal coat, or even a coat of seal coat, and then a coat of polyurethane, whatever you like. And that would finish up the product, uh, the project. I hope you enjoyed my video. Use the comment box below for any questions or comments, either personally, I myself will help you out, because I do get some bright ideas, or one of our fellow YouTube users, I'm sure, will be happy to chime in. Rate the video, because all this interaction between you and me helps me out with this YouTube gig. Don't forget to subscribe to my Handyman Zone. We cover everything from plumbing, electric, decorative, whatever pops up we can handle any suggestions or questions that you want videos put it in the comment box or inbox me thanks for watching my crazy youtube friends